My shalom rastafari, greeting to me, rasi adino safari, ne, wendem yadin of the land just side of majesty. Um, and uh, we're broadcasting, uh, hopefully, on the Ethiopian World Net, as well as on other brotherhood and, and, and um, sister churches. And we want to touch on, um, it, it connects with masonry, too, and you can look it up in some of the so-called Freemasonic rituals. We want to call this probably a message on, um, um, on death and hell, since some of these messages here have been speaking about death, like the recent messages, but putting it into proper context, such on the God is dead, and when they say, Rasi, your God is dead, you understand, and that kind of echoes what is in the psalm, how they say that God is dead. Remember, this is Old Testament now, so what we're seeing today is not really anything new, but it's because they have rewritten history. You understand, and with a rewritten history, and there's a vid that we have on, on hold, right, and just in case we don't get into it, you're going to check out this vid, the power behind the New World Order, right, and there's a section here where they're talking about the miseducation, you understand, how they would purposely after World War II, you understand, fight like an educational war, and they would use um, different of their teachers, send them out to subvert um, nations, you understand, and to cause nations to lose their sovereignty. So we were actually in this particular teaching right here, as well as the, um, the, the conspiracy, right, against his imperial majesty, right, and the whole is God dead, just linking it with some of these, that kind of link so ones would know, okay, where are we, you know, where are we speaking, and so this, this connects right here, you know, in, in, the, in the fuller points of why his majesty is not a so-called um, Freemason. You understand, as they, as they say, as they blaspheme him, all right? But now, first of all, let's understand something, with this whole Masonic thing, and, and this just give you like a, a kind of an overview, right? That if you read their own documents and check out different vids and so forth and so on, publications out there that have been putting out more or less the truth here and there, you have to really, you know, prove all things for yourself as the scripture teaches us, right? Study and show yourself approved to God as a workman, need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we want to rightly divide the word of truth concerning death and hell. You understand that it has been mistranslated. But then we see how it connects with the whole um, Illuminati. You understand the whole Illuminati uh, agenda. Then also there's a lot of slander and blasphemy that's coming out and false accusation against the brethren, against Rastafari. You understand? And against uh, the faithful, the Tirufa, you understand, those, those faithful um, um, Ethiopian and Ethiopian Hebrews at home and abroad because we are in these last times, the last days of the Gentile world dominion and of the church age. So you're going to see a lot of stuff also coming up about the church. Well, it's already been in the news a lot, you understand, where it's like the church is no longer the so called church that we so called once knew or in traditional times. And that also connects with the whole um, um, false Luciferian emanation philosophy, Helen Blavatsky, um, Alice Bailey, and, 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 and Albert Pikey. That's why we did a former video where, where the whole thing comes down to Lucifer, you understand? And, and his and minions, or Satana, you understand, his and her minions against Adonai, right? And Adonai is our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshis. The COINTELPRO also goes global. So what we see in Ethiopia was a form of the COINTELPRO at the very heart of the matter and how there was this careless generation, right, this careless generation. That's what we was reasoning on. And we want to touch a little bit more on it, at least to link with this how the Illuminati or Lucifer Trust Renamed Lucis Trust. Let's just get into the video right now, and 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 we'll touch on the the death and hell and the mistranslation and what it really and what it really means, what it really forebodes. Let's see if we can back this up here. We might have to refresh the page. Let's see how this goes through right here. Okay, that's that's what probably has happened. You understand because we had this on for a while. So we also touched on the external, the externalization of the hierarchy and also keep in mind 
the the symbol of the League of Nations. You know this, and what what God in Christ, and what when, and what the Spirit of God in the person of Kedemawi Hala Salas, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, how he was able to prevail over the League of Nations and over all those European thrones which were cast down. Remember Daniel says he beholds until the thrones were cast down. Remember there's that V. They call it V for victory, but there's actually that V which was for a vendetta. So there was a vendetta against his imperial majesty that, that, that then leads us to this, um, to this coup and conspiracy. And this is a resource um, material right here by Hans Valheim Lockert. And we've been studying here. It's called, the, what is it, the, the life, uh, reign, and character of Haile Selassie. It's a very um, well-researched book. And as we glean this, it's on the revolution, the finale, right? As we start to put together this particular picture right here. Now, that video doesn't seem to be playing, right? But here's what we've been reading so far, right? This is what we've been reading here. So let's go on with this. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into this a little bit more. And then hopefully y'all willing, because there was a sister who had asked, um, concerning, um, there's a sister who had asked concerning um, purgatory and what's the Ethiopian view of that. This is this is a section right here. This is the section in the vid. So so yeah, make it a little bit larger, and let's get into this. Um, let's let, let us get into this right here. We can take off that, right? Let us get into this. So they're going to talk about the educational system, right, and how Lucius. Trust was known as Lucifer's trust today was known as Lucifer trust. So remember, there's a war between Lucifer and Adonai, right? Albert Pike, he lays that out right there. You know, there's a further reason why his imperial majesty did not have any, any friendship or agreement with boisterous white supremacy. But he opposed them, and he exposed them as well in that whole... Um, speech, uh, a triumphant entry, Victory Day, May 5th, as we have, have addressed, we addressed that briefly um, in, in, in the forwards, all right? So that's also part of, a part of it, so the, the Victory Day, May 5th, 1941. So let us deal with this right here. This is this uh, researcher here, and he's talking about how they came together after World War, after World War II. All right, so let, let us bring up the sound. Mr. Dodd, you have spoken before about uh, some interesting things that were discovered by Catherine Casey at the Carnegie Endowment. Can you tell us that story, please? Yes, I was glad to, Mr. Griffin. Um, this experience that you have just referred to came about in response to a letter which I had written to the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, asking certain questions and gathering certain information. And on the, on the arrival of that letter, Dr. Johnson, who was then president of the Carnegie Endowment, telephoned me and said, did I ever come up to New York? And I said, yes, I did, more or less each weekend. And he said, well, when you're next here, will you drop in and see us? which I did, and again on arrival at the, the office of the endowment, I found myself in the presence of Dr. Joseph Johnson, the, the president who was a successor to Alger Hiss, two vice presidents and their own counsel, a partner in the firm, Sullivan and Cromwell. And Dr. Johnson said, after, again, amenities, Mr. Dodd, we have your letter. We can answer all those questions, but it'd be a great deal of trouble. And we have a counter-suggestion. Hmm. And our counter-suggestion is that if you can spare a member of your staff for two weeks and send that member up to New York, we will give to that member a room in the library and the minute books of this foundation since its inception. And we think that whatever you want to find out or the Congress wants to find out will be 
obvious from those minutes. What could possibly be wrong with foundations? They do so much good. Well, in the face of that sincere conviction of Catherine's, I went out of my way not to prejudice her in any way. But I did explain to her that she couldn't possibly cover 50 years of handwritten minutes in two weeks. So she would have to do what we call spot reading. And I blocked out certain periods of time to concentrate on. So if she went to New York, she came back at the end of two weeks with the following in the way of on, on dictaphone belt. We are now at the year 1908, which was the year that the Carnegie began operation. And in that year, the trustees, meeting for the first time, raised a specific question, which they discussed throughout the balance of the year in a very learned fashion. And the question is, is there any means known more effective than war, assuming you wish to alter the life of an entire people? And they conclude that no, no, no more effective means than war to that end is known to humanity. And finally, of course, we are. <clears throat> the war is over. At that time, their interest shifts over to preventing what they call a reversion of life in the United States to what it was prior to 1914 when World War I broke out. And they arrive at that point. They come to the conclusion that to prevent a reversion, we must control education in the United States. And they realize that that's a pretty big task. So it's, to them, it is too big for them alone, so they approach the Rockefeller Foundation with the suggestion that that portion of education, which is, could be considered domestic, be handled by the Rockefeller Foundation, and that portion, which is international, should be handled by the endowment. And they then decide that the key to the success of these two operations lay in the alteration of the teaching of American history. Now, uh, this clearly stated in externalization of the hierarchy, educators and psychologists of vision in every country must be mobilized and the pattern of things to come for the children must be intelligently determined. This will have to be done on an international scale and with the wisdom which comes from a grasp of intermediate need and a far-sighted vision. It is a gentleman whose trust is no fringe group. Anyone who has studied the New World Order realizes the power that is held by men such as John D. Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, and through organizations such as the Council on Foreign Relations. These men are heavily involved with and have set up in many occasions these tax-exempt foundations which undermine the national sovereignty of many nations and draw us closer to a one-world religion enforced by a one-world government. All right, now that's, that's, that's a part of it. That's a part of it um, right there. That's a part of it right there. So there was this, there was this um, conspiracy, a counter, counterintelligence. That's where we get the COINTEL from. You know what I'm saying? And even on certain levels, we know about the Rockefeller drug laws. If you recall the Rockefeller drug laws, you know, and they shall cast some of you into prison. So this was done on an international level. Now there's more in the, you know, in the documentary, and we suggest that you um, check it out. And hopefully we, we can also have that in the educational package available soon. So stay tuned for it. But you know, go and, and check it out for yourself and those who have the skills and everything. You know, download these things and and start to you know start to be about I and I father's business. But now let's continue with what was going on and what we're calling right here. Um, you know, there's an educational conspiracy. Right? There there was a creeping coup 
you know what I'm saying, um, in, 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 the, in the university. You know, was in Ethiopia in the university, you know. And it's interesting because actually in um, this particular book here, right, this particular book here by um, Hans Valheim Lockard, right, the mission, he actually touches on it, you know, um, not directly, but he's telling you that there were these, there were these problems, these challenges, this this bagoresu tenekesu. You know, saying there was this biting of the hand, right? There was this biting of the hand that fed them, and many of us have been trying to figure out. Well, we, we know the Bible speaks about killing Ethiopians. We know that it says that the Ethiopians, they shall be slain by my sword, and it's Yahweh, it's God that says that. We know the relationship between the children of the Ethiopians and the children of Israel. We know about the relationship of, of, of the Ethiopians at home in Ethiopia, in Africa, and those of us beyond the rivers of Ethiopia and us here in the diaspora, you know, in the falashes of the West, you know, saying we uh, black Hebrews, black Jews, uh, we Ethiopian Hebrews, and this is a, a good book too. You can check this out on our on on our study page, right? We the black Jews, right? Very important book right here, and it says uh, witness um, to the white Jewish race myth. You understand? This is by um, Yosef A. A. Ben Yohanan. You understand? Some say Jokinen, um, and uh, Ethiopian uh, Falash or Beta Israel, or a black Jew of Ethiopia. You over? So now, as we go further in this right here, let's just go on. Where it says the people of Addis Ababa were in a state of anguish. In the book that we mentioned before, we we'll mention it again. I think it's a Marta, um, Marta Gebra's Adik, if I'm correct, um, who wrote a book, uh, Sheltered by the King. You know what I'm saying? If you can get a copy of that. It, it, it's, a, it's a personal journal, but when we're reading it in, in the Holy Spirit, being guided by the Spirit of Truth, we begin to get a more fuller, more of an HD, high definition. You know what I'm saying? High details and putting it together with the prophetic word. This picture now comes to life, like when we read Isaiah chapter one, you know, saying where 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 the Almighty, where God says that He nourishes and brings up children, you know, saying who who rebel against Him, you know, saying, and then we have these these, these are the children, this careless generation which rebelled against His Imperial Majesty, but His Majesty there will be no bloodshed, you know what I'm saying? He he instead spoke of negotiations. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, come, let us reason together. Because many had become um, compromised. You know what I'm saying? Many were compromised or co-opted. You know what I'm saying? Even many of the ministers. who we were reading um, the, the Constitution, the 55, 1955 Constitution, or law, the Higa Mengis. And we read in one of the articles, where it says that ones were not to receive any sort of, um, you know, like basic like honors, foreign honors from foreign powers and so forth and so on. But many did. This is why many came, you know, instead of coming back with their education and building it up, they came back to bite their hand of the one that fed them and to complain about things instead of, instead of to work it out. You know, instead of saying we job people can make it work, they already had committed you understand the great uh, transgression or, 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 the, or, the, or the apostasy. This is where we get the apostasy. And as we read in Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, there was one who would be taken out of the way. You understand? By them taking his imperial match, that symbol of, of unity. You understand? And taking the monarchy. You understand? As well as what they did with the, the black Jews. You understand, they gave them a, a false narrative, but many of them are beginning, you know, many of the Beta Israel of the East are beginning to even see the lies for themselves. You understand, as many accept, you know, accept Christ, you know, the true Christ, and begin to recognize their own roots, and the fullness is right there. You have to understand that, that the only power the evildoers have, or Satan has, is is by the thoughts, by germinating thoughts and ideas. So 
the this careless generation was giving certain false ideas. And so opening up their eyes and really recognizing, it's almost like when parents have children and they turn teenager, in a sense, and they begin to, you know, um, act out and rebel. In a sense, it's what we have on the level of rebellion. So we have his majesty as, as a father, you understand, as Abba, even the father of modern and righteous Africa, who even see after what happened in Ethiopia become the domino effect, you know, the of what would happen in, in other countries in Africa, that those who were pushed out now came back as mercenaries and bloodshed, you know, in war. But we see his majesty's wise decision of not going after, you know, the, the, the Illuminati bait. Because many of the people were in anguish, it says right here, because they wanted to, as, as, as uh, Hans Valheim says, but the emperor, Negusin the guest, quietly and adamantly repeated his decision. There would be no bloodshed, but negotiations instead. Mm -hmm. Because what would it be for his majesty to, to, to build this up? You understand, in love and in faith and, and in good work, and then to tear down the very same ones he had nourished and to kill them. That's why a lot of the lies you be hearing, you understand, from different, you know, from different quarters and everything. You, you know, because many are blind and have been blinded. Many have been taken captive. This is why the real resource of the church and prayer and, 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 and receiving the word. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, really loving the truth. Mm -hmm. So his majesty repeated that. And then people ask, and this is what one's ask, and Hans Valheim, he, he, he puts the question, the worldly perspective, right, from the world, was he not able to see that bloodshed would suddenly follow a revolution and that he was not only putting his own life at stake but sacrificing all those who had served him faithfully for so long? He wasn't sacrificing anyone. He, he of course, had put his life at stake you understand, as he says in the Oriana Falachi interview, you understand, as a, as a father serving his son. You understand, as the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand side until your enemies become your footstool. You understand, so the father himself, you understand, God has come and visited all nations and shown his salvation. But he has come to his own, right, and his own refused. And something else I thought about, too, when all these Europeans that came in, you remember in in J. A. Rogers' book, where J. A. Rogers was talking about how do the chapter, the section that says, how do Ethiopians feel about Afro Americans, Afro Americans, and they had wanted Afro Americans to come forward and to share their learning and, and was willing to offer them, you know, land and, and property and other things so they can invest and help build up this new Africa. You understand know and reverse the curse. You understand, of the Gentile white dominion. But remember what the word said, they shall come out with great substance, right? But the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. You understand, it's not yet full. And this is that dispensation, that overlap, you can say. You understand, but really, it is us, as, 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 as a people, as Ethiopia at home and abroad, that must come to repentance. You understand, and this is why we've been preaching that message of the Ethiopian repentance. You understand, I think since since the 1990s, late 90s, but 2000 or so. And there was that syzygy on May 5th as well that many of us recall. But let's go on with the mission right here at page 122, those who have a copy. Uh -huh. It says the people of Addis Ababa were in a state of anguish. Jerusalem, you know, they were with over saying Jerusalem, since Ethiopia, from God's perspective, is likened, holy Ethiopia is likened to Israel. And, you know, and all the evidence is there biblically, but because of, you know, of, of, of boisterous white supremacy and racism and, and the deception of the devil, many white people and black people even deny that Ethiopian connection in spite of all the evidence. You understand? But the question is to you, do you love the truth? Even if it goes against your beliefs or your paradigm, are you willing to receive the truth and also to be born again and conform yourself to that image of his son, to our Lord and Savior, Getachinam, Medhanatachin, Jesus Christos. So Jerusalem was in anguish. If you want to uh, read about it, in a sense, from, from God's perspective, read Lamentations. Lamentations really 
it is a lamentation. A lamentation is still going on. It's a kokawa, Aramis, right? It says every church, right? Every church in town was crowded. Everyone went to the churches. Mm hmm. But did they go within? You understand? Were their eyes open? Were they recognizing? You understand? Were they recognizing the hour? You understand? Of his visitation. Were they recognizing that hour of the visitation? Uh, a scripture just came to mind right here. You understand? The scriptures came to mind. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on this right here. This is the off air reasoning. But we'll touch on this right here. Um, the hour. Let's see, type in our, let's see, our and visitation. Uh, yeah, correct that, please? Yeah, our and visitation. We're going to type in our and visitation. The, actually, the, the end, uh, visitation. My, my bad. I think I typed that. Yeah, and Yeah, the hour of the visitation. Mm-hmm. All right, click on visitation. All right. And, and, and let's see down here. Let's go New Testament. New Testament, right? Um, the New Testament. All right. Let's go to stop right there. Luke, Luke, nineteen forty-four, and it says, and and lay and and shall lay thee even with the ground, and shall lay thee and shall lay thee even. In other words, even with the ground, we're going to be on the same level as the ground. Right, and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. That's the hour, my bad. The time. Right, they didn't know the time of thy visitation. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know that, that this was the time of thy visitation. That's why it says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. All the wife of the Perinjoj, right? That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, right? They may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. All right? So Luke 14, 44 shows that, the, uh, sorry, 19, my bad, 1944, 1944, because there's another verse in mind that I want to share with you where it says that um, it says that God will visit all nations, right? God, God, let's type in uh, God right here, right? Um, so visit, um, and this for nations, those three key words, right? Nations, right? right? God visit nations, and let us see, okay, God visit this pen, um, let's see. Maybe it was in, in the Lord, you understand, capital L-O-R-D, you understand, visit thee, visit, right, I will visit thee. You see, Jeremiah, behold, I'm against thee, all right, it says right here, um, shall visit, um, visit all nations, um, it's in the verse of salvation, I might be going over it right here, visit all the heathen, okay, visit Let's see, what happened right there? So, okay, we're going to visit, visit, um, it's, it's for all nations. There might be a few verses on that. Um, this, this is like a rhema right here, a rhema word, and you think you have, um, right here, 50, 52 and 10. Mm -hmm. In other words, it says in 82 and 8, it says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Why would God have to inherit all nations? Now, ask yourself that. You understand? And it's not just poetical, right? Isaiah 52 and 10 says, The Lord hath made bear his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of of our God, and then she'll see the salvation, uh-huh, and we know that in other scriptures it speaks about how God will show his salvation, you understand, and also speak about visiting, um, I'll look up that verse as well, right, but anyway, 
I just want to just, just check on some of these verses right here. And then, of course, the man-child right here, the man-child, right? And the blessing of the gospel right here in, in Galatians 3 and 8, you know? So he's rich to us in his word. So anyway, let's continue with um, the Addis Ababa, our Jerusalem, right? The African Sion was in a state of anguish. Every church in town was crowded. Prayers were said in the huts too. And many hut dwellers were thinking that God's punishment had fallen on Ethiopia, right? And that Minulik's curse was about to be fulfilled. It seemed as if Hala Selassie was thinking only of the salvation of his own soul, right? You, you, you always how they're speaking here, all right? That he was only thinking about the salvation and no longer cared for the salvation of his people. I mean, this is Hans Valheim Laka. That's what you have to read between the lines right here. But really, the people, their eyes were not open. They had not recognized the time of their visitation. The Ovazan, and even the, we hope that they recognize the present time. The cabinet immediately resigned. Some dignitaries started making desperate preparations for flight. The Ovazan for flight. The Ovazan. To, to to get out, you know. Then we can say that Psalms uh, was it thirty seven fret not thyself, but they fretted themselves. So they might have been in church, but they were that the word was not in them. Because if it was, their eyes would have been open. You know what I'm saying? They would have recognized what was the right thing to do. But most returned to their homes to await their destiny. What kind of thing is this? The most. I mean, why was it their destiny? You know what I'm saying? So it says whatever it might be. But his refusal to fight, you know, his refusal to, to, to commit bloodshed or to give up Ethiopia to the international bankers, to the Lord, the Balaam of London. You know what I'm saying? It says that his refusal to fight, Hala Selassie placed his own life and the lives of all the key figures in the regime entirely in the hands of the mutineers. Really? Of the mutineers? Who are the mutineers? And who was behind these mutineers? And how does this connect with the bigger picture of the so-called Illuminati free masonry agenda, right? So one thing, well, he was of them. He was down with them. So Satan fighting against Satan? Well, what kind of so how should be divided? Things should have got better, right? But things didn't get better. Things got worse. So let's understand right here. In February 1974, power passed to the army. And the negotiations ordered by the emperor Nagus and the guests became more empty maneuvers, they say. Was Hala Selassie overthrown by the army? Listen, listen. This is the question. Was he vanquished by the revolution? Did the revolution vanquish him? Just as the rise of the young Teferi or Tefari was shrouded in mystery, the mystery of God in Christ. So also was Nagus and the guest's disappearance from the scene. So it's saying that his disappearance from the scene was also shrouded, you understand, in mystery. Was also shrouded, let's see if we have that on 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 a ready right here, right? Was also shrouded in, in mystery. You understand his his disappearance from the scene was also shrouded in mystery. What mystery was this? You understand? Whose mystery was this? And, and why was it as at, at Caduce uh, Estefano? And why was Estefano the first um, uh, martyr of, early, uh, of the early church? And why was he martyred when he looked up into the heavens and he saw the Son sitting at the right hand of the Father, that particular part, Psalm 110? You know what I'm saying? And what is this father-son relationship really all about? And why would His Majesty say in the Oriana Falachi interview that, um, that the Lord deemed that he would, he, would, he, would, he would serve Ethiopia as a father served his son? What kind of, I mean, what's that about? And why is Oriana Falachi, you know, Falachi, uh, you know, was, was probing on death, how you view death? You understand? And why does Matthew not even answer that and just dismiss her straight out, outright? Um, 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 Tiffy, right? 
Kazi, Isfi Kazi, Kasufi, or Sesufi, it was, it was perish from here. You know what I'm saying? Perish from, you know, from here. So it says that just as the rise of the young Teferi was shrouded in mystery, so some things even in the world, the Seclorum, all the wise ones in the world don't even know. So also was the emperors, Nagus and Nagas, his disappearance from the scene. He was not overthrown by the army. And he was not defeated by the revolution. So those two questions are succinctly answered. He was not overthrown by the army. And he was not defeated by the revolution. We have to bring up a word right here. There's a rhema word right here where, where it speaks about there will be a kingdom. Right? There will be a kingdom that will be established. And it's in Donnell. Even though Lucis Trust and all of them think they're wiser than, than Daniel, you understand, there was a kingdom, right? It says that in his days, right, there will be a kingdom, right, um, that would not be given over to another, to another people, right, another people. There was a kingdom that the Ancient of Days would establish a kingdom, let me write, type this in, that would not be given over to another people. We're talking about a real, a real um, kingdom here. You understand? Ancient kingdom. Well, let's, let, let's see if it's here. It's in Daniel. Um, Daniel's, uh, right, um, right here. Daniel 2 and 44. Right? You see it? 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings, which kings? You know, the European kings, the banker king, the banking king, the kings of industry, so forth and so on. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom where? On earth, right? Earth's rightful ruler, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It's still there. It's not left to other people. You know, over the monarchy will be restored. You understand? We're at 36, 37 years and counting. We say about 40. 40, right? That's the, that's the space of one king, right? According to, according to David, according to Solomon, according to Negus and Negus, right? Um, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That's a prophetic area in the scripture where is this, is, 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 are these key words in, um, um, okay, it's in, it's in Revelation where it speaks about that, that the kingdoms all of a sudden become, it's like Christ immediately intervenes. And this is kind of maybe the connection with the, with the great white throne where it says that the heaven that was fled from the presence of him who sits on it. And the masons, the masons, right, or the Freemasons, the European masons, they be saying, in their ritual, that they're going to appear before, like, this great white throne. And Revelation says when they appear before that great white throne, there's not going to be no place for them to appear, because Peter said, where would the sinner and the ungodly appear if, if, if the righteous through difficulty? If we as the righteous in Yeshua HaMoshiach, it's through great difficulty because of our flesh, you understand, and keeping our mind, you understand, on his word and on Yeshua, if it's going to be difficult for us, but we will be saved, you understand, then where will the sinner and the ungodly appear? You understand? So make note of this, that his imperial majesty was not overthrown. So this is on page um, 122. And just, just so everyone can know, we're reading from this book right here. Right? And this is not a Rastafari. Hans Waldheim Lockett is not a Rastafari. But he does give some very interesting detail, being an being a eyewitness and being there. You understand? I mean, he gives a balance, right? The life, reign, and character of Hala Selassie first. Like we said, there's some, there's some good Germans or honest Germans, you know, right? Because remember, it was Germany, right? It was Germany and really Germany alone that, that basically violated that, that League of Nations embargo and sold weapons, you understand, to the, um, um, the defenseless Ethiopians, the ones that did not have any of these weapons of warfare, this modern warfare for this old-time satanic vendetta, right, um, against, against the, the, the holy ones, the martyrs, those who are wearing the white robes. You understand, that's where weapons of mass destruction was first used. Now it says, 
Just as the rise of young Seferi was shrouded in the mystery, so also was Nagusa Neges' disappearance, the emperor's disappearance from the scene. He was not overthrown by the army, and he was not defeated by the revolution. We just showed you the scripture right there. I think that was 2 and 44 of um, Don L. You understand? But the Luciferians and the Satanists think they're wiser than Don L. You understand? And there's a verse for that. It says, while still in possession of power. Let's understand this. While still in possession of power, he surrendered without a fight. This was a battle. Right? He did not want to win. You understand? This was a battle that he did not want to win. So, so let's understand this kind of, this kind of, let's understand this clearly when we're speaking of his imperial majesty and when we're speaking of, well, well, what's going on now? What is to come? What does the divine word say about this particular matter? But on the whole educational level, you understand, it's, it's kind of very interesting. You might just, um, on the outro, right, on the outro, let's go back to the, or forward to the video over here. And this video is very, the power, it's called the power behind um, the New World Order. You understand? So his majesty was not down with them, but his majesty is the one whom, whom um, in John's epistle, where it says that, it says that he came to reprove the world. You understand? Let's go to the scripture so, so we can see it for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Because you need this here as your, as your not just ammunition. Remember, it's a sword. You know So don't think in those, don't, don't get lost in translation right there. Um, reprove, right? Reprove um, the world, right? Right? The world and sin, right? So we can know, well, well what role did his majesty play? In this um, in this world stage, and why was he around all these world leaders? Remember, where sin abound, grace abound much more. You understand? One had to testify, as Christ said. You know, um, um, two witnesses. You understand? Two men, the Father and the Son. All right. It says right here. It says, but um, verse five. But now I go my way to Him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I said these things to you, sorry hath filled your heart. Because Magic said the things to them that he, that he said, sorrow filled their heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come to you. You understand? But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, something the Comforter is only the Holy Spirit. It's very clear that the, the comforter is the spirit of truth, is God as the spirit of truth, and is God. You understand? So when we see his majesty with, with the, even the League of Nations and reproving them, you understand? And what became of the League of Nations, you understand? And every warning and every witness of the King of Kings can be summed up right here. And when he is come, John 16 and 8, he will reprove the world of sin, of the world. You see, we have the Holy Spirit in the personal sense, and in the comforter in that sense, when we are born again and we receive him. You'll say, but then he is saying that this he, and he connects the he if you study the words of Jesus Christo. So if you study, if you study and show yourself approved to God as a workman, that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly explaining the truth based on the truth, the Bible by the Bible, according to the Bible, because it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's like the code of the, of the real matrix. You know what I'm saying? When the word becomes a living word in you. You know what I'm saying? Because the word on the paper is a dead. It's dead. But now when you take it in faith, you know what I'm saying? And it's faith that on the object of the faith, which is the Amen, which is Yeshua, which is the Yeshua's crystals and his word, and you grow up to him, and you come into that unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not, not what they be teaching out here in these churches out there, um, just to have a feeling like a, a, a love and peace and a joy, joy. A lot of that's a deception. That's a deception out there. Could it not? That's the word. Remember, keep my saying. And he, and when he has come, he will prove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of three. Notice that three. He will reprove the world of these three. You understand? And we see here, right, that his imperial majesty did reprove the world of all three of these. Of what? Of sin, firstly, 
because they believe not on me, right? Of sin because they don't believe in Yeshua HaMoshiach. They may speak about Christ, but their work, the, the, the work is the work of Satan, of Lucifer. So they may speak of it, but His Majesty reproves them. And notice how His Majesty did not have to um, make testimony of His faith. And as he did testify to being Christian, he didn't have to really do the work, like many Christians don't do the work. But he both said it and did it in word and in deed. Of righteousness, Christ is saying, because I go to my Father. So that's why he says, you're not going to see me no more, but you're going to see me and not see me. So this is why all these questions about, you know, um, your, is, is how the Selassie Christ or not, is he Jesus or not. Remember the Father and the Son. You understand, the Son and the Father in the Holy Spirit, the One, right? Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. He says, and you see me no more. And of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judge, right? The Prince of this world. Now, who is the Prince of this world? Well, the Bible tells us the Prince of this world is the God of this world. You understand? And, and the God of this world is Satan, is the devil. You understand it? It's Lucifer, in other words, what they call Lucifer, Satan. And, and Satan is against Adonai. You know what I'm saying? Adonai is Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? Yes, was Christos. And his majesty testifies of who? Both in word and in deed, I mean, in, in so many ways. You know what I'm saying? In so many ways. So the prince of this world is judge. And then he says this interesting right here. He says, um, I have yet many things to say to you. But ye cannot bear them now. In other words, if you don't recognize earthly things, how can you recognize heavenly things? You know what I'm saying? But it's coming. It's coming. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. His majesty does not speak of himself. Understand that even from the, the, the interview with Oriana Falachi, 1973, June 24th. But... but Whatsoever he shall hear, how does he hear it spiritually? That shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. And we have this in the Fakave Yeses. You understand? We have this testimony in this little book. You understand? And we've published it again. And we're about to publish the, um, the, the translation and interpretation, the Fakave Yeses. So you can read the Amharic. You can see right here. It is speaking of uh, Gurmawi, um, Nagusa Nagas, Kadamawi, Haila Salasi, Be Arba Shostenyao Zemene Mengish, right? Or the 43rd year. Isn't the 43rd year roughly, we could say either 1973, uh, right? Isn't that the 43rd year? Right? Isn't that the 43rd year? Let's recognize, right? 43rd year. 43rd year. So that is, that's also very, very interesting. Because he goes on to say that he shall glorify me. Do we or do we not have this testimony in his imperial majesty? Now notice if this was a lot of um, um, guys and gals in the world, a lot of these false prophets and these false Christs out there. If people, if they had people like the Rastafari, right, and that were saying that they're this or that. They would run around there saying, yeah, I am this or that because that proves that they're false. You understand? Our Father did not have any need to, to do such things because it was to serve, right, to serve as a Father serves his Son, to make all those enemies of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, make all of those enemies his footstool, all the enemies of the Son. And so when we... we you know, when we touched on the other, um, on the other picture, right, um, the other prophetic picture, let's just bring this up here, because we, we, we have to let you see this so you can, you know, give a, give a teaching, this is like a teaching tool, you know, we don't worship no pictures, are you crazy, you know what I'm saying, uh, foolish people do, Gentiles do that, you know what I'm saying, unrighteous ones, and, uh, you know, and lost sheeple. You know what I'm saying? But what we have here is a, is a spiritual abstract. You know what I'm saying? Now, it says right here that, that, that there is a, it says a new truth to be revealed by the Spirit. And so some folks don't get it because you have to get it spiritually. It says, I have yet many things to say to you, but ye cannot bear them now. 
Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will guide, and he will shew you, excuse me, he will shew you all, he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me. So this one who is to come will glorify who? This is how you can tell the Antichrist, the false Christ, they glorify themselves. Who did his imperial majesty, Kedamawi Haile Shalasi, Haile Shalasi the first, Suyume Gziari here, the Hashem, Negusa Neges, Ze Ethiopia. Who did he glorify? He glorified Getachinam and Hanatachin Yesus Christos. That is who he glorified. All right? He said, my, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You understand? Know, and this is what we say and mean by the gospel of his imperial majesty, the good news of his imperial majesty. Truly one who spoke the word in truth and did the deed in truth. For he shall receive of mine and shall shew it to you. So that's why when we as children, even little children, we see his majesty, we see Christ. You know what I'm saying? We even see the Son. But this is why we have to be schooled in the Word and have to study and show ourselves approved. You know what I'm saying? In the Word and through the Word. That's how we verify it. Right? And shall shew it to you all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall shew it to you. So some folks say, oh, he can't call himself Moan, Bethlehem, Negeti, Yehuda. That is Christ title. It is. It's the Father and the Son. You understand? So when you see him, you understand? You see him because Yahweh means he will be who he be. And then he says, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. You understand? Now the Son has already done and fulfilled it. You understand? Then there will be a dispensation. That's why the Jews, even the Jews say um, that there were two Christs. And, or two messiahs. You understand? Now, Gentiles might not be able to understand this, but Christ said, ye worship what ye know not. We know what we worship for salvation of the Jews, the line of the tribe of Judah. So we recognize that when the Jews say that there are these two messiahs, that there's the Moshiach, then Yosef, and there's the Moshiach, then David, in Jesus Christos, or in Yeshua, Jesus, 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 the Son, the Son of God, we have the Moshiach, Right? Bain who? Bain Yosef. You know and then his majesty, we have the, the Moshiach, right? Bain David, on the throne of David. So when we say the king of kings and lord of lords, although he never took lord of lords, as that time, remember the lord of lords is now sitting on the throne of the father in heaven. So who did his majesty pray to the father? Pray to the son. The son prayed to the father. What is prayer? Prayer is communication. You understand? Prayer is communication. I mean, learn to do it. And when you do it, you understand, you'll recognize that prayer is communication. You understand? Now, this whole chapter right here is very, very interesting. It's chapter 16, because it will disclose much more to you, you understand, of that mystery, right, of God in Christ. So, my brothers and my sisters, um, I say shalom rastafari. I say to, to, to share this with others. And this is, this is kind of, in a sense, to sum up a little bit about the revolution, you know, because there's been a lot of um, opinions out there. And, and we've got to prove all things. We've got to find out, I mean, is it true, you understand, what they say? I mean, we can't believe them because we know that the world is so unbelievable. It is so incredible. You understand? Yet we learn in spirit and in truth that the, that the teaching of his imperial majesty and the testimony of his Christ is very um, credible. You understand? And, it, and it's very, um, I don't like to use the word believe, that be lie, but it comes from amen, which is the amen. And the amen being the subject of I and I faith, Jesus Christos. You understand that he is, he is, or he's or the object of our faith. You know, what he's that object. You understand? And what we, when we look at the word, we don't see the Yeshua. But now it's how we now receive this word subjectively. You understand? Whether we let go of our ego, we have to crucify, you understand, that ego. 
Yehova saying that, 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 well, this is me, this is mine, this is the way. And you can see that difference in the way the world, you understand, and how the world and the God of the world, you understand, that selfish, that self-focus, that's of self, that's of the flesh, you understand. But the King of Kings and his Christ is of the spirit. And I pray that you too, my brothers and sisters, would be of that spirit and of that truth. You understand? So that we all may be one and we all may stand on holy Mount Sion. So in the name of the King of Kings and his Christ, I say Baruch, blessings to the eye of them, and Shalom, Rastafari.